Hello, greetings. Uh, my old equipment failed, and finally now I'm using uh, some new equipment, and hopefully this will all work. Uh, before I uh, was having a hard time getting the audio, and may still have that problem, but we'll try the new equipment. Uh, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent, starting with the first reading, Joshua chapter 5. Verse 9a, and then 10 to 12. God has led the Israelite people across the Jordan. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. I understand the word reproach, uh, that God has, has removed is to, uh, is to be, is the shame, the disgrace and dishonor of their subjection to a state of slavery to the Egyptians. God's promise to give them a land overflowing with milk and honey is now in the process of being fulfilled. Their exodus from Egypt began with the celebration of the Passover and now ends outside Jericho with that same celebration. God's loving mercy has powerfully delivered what was tragically lost to become something whole, holy and new the Israelite people in possession of their own land. And then to the third reading, Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 3, 11 to 32. Jesus answers the complaint of the Pharisees and scribes that this man welcomes sinners and eats with them in this 15th chapter of Luke with three parables. The first two parables in Luke chapter 15, verses 4 to 10, of the lost coin and the lost sheep, uh, they're not included in our Sunday's readings, come to the same conclusion as the third parable of the prodigal or lost son. God rejoices that those who were lost to sin are now found so that they can return to a proper relationship with God, holiness. The younger son, on demanding that he now get his inheritance without having to wait until his father dies, is in effect saying to his father, As far as I am concerned, I now consider you dead. He then, uh, he then leaves to squander his part of his family's hard-earned fortune on a period of dissipation with prostitutes. Penniless, with nothing to eat, he decides to return to his father, no longer as his son, since he has considered his father as dead, to get his, uh, to get his inheritance, but as a hired hand. On his return, while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. Although the younger son just tries to get a job from his father, the father will have nothing of that, since he loves his son so deeply. He welcomes his son with the finest robe, a ring, sandals, and a spectacular feast. Since his son was dead, has now come to life again. He was lost, and he has been found. It struck me that this will be the kind of celebration that there will be when a repentant sinner gets to heaven. In Jesus' three parables in Luke 15, uh, chapter, Luke's chapter 15, those who were lost, but now Jesus, who were lost, but now Jesus is seeking to have return to a state of holiness, are analogous to the sinners that the Pharisees and the scribes are complaining about. In turn, the older son is analogous to the Pharisees and scribes themselves who have always been obedient to the law. Jesus is saying that they should be of the same mind as the Father in the parable, who rejoices at the return of the sinner to be reconciled to God the Father. As God's love is merciful, so should we be. In the second reading, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The question is, what does it mean to be in Christ? That phrase, in Christ. 
First John chapter 16 says, We should come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him. My own, uh, my own uh, little thought is, whoever remains in God's love for us remains in God. Then in, cha in uh, 1 John again, chapter 5, verse 12, uh, it says, Whoever possesses the Son has life. Whoever does not possess the Son of God does not have life. My own thought, I have God, God has me. Without God, without God, life is as material life is, that ends in rot. In John, in the um, Gospel, in John chapter 6, verse 53b, Jesus says, Unless you eat the, the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. In John chapter 6, verse 56, Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. To be in Christ means that Christ is my life. Neither I nor anything or anyone is my life but Christ. Christ is everything for us. Everything or everyone is nothing to us except to the degree that we relate to it or to them out of our relationship to Christ. Carrying that a step further is to say we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. Since we, ha we have found such peace, joy, and truth from our life in Christ, we ought to strive to bring everyone into that same relationship with Christ. As we are in Christ, everyone should also be in Christ. We are ambassadors from a spiritual world to a people who belong in heart and mind to an earthly world that does not relate to spiritual reality. We have the ministry of reconciliation, that is, to reconcile or reestablish the proper relationship between God and ourselves and others, and others around us, to bring not only ourselves, but all to be in Christ. God be blessed. I hope this actually recorded. <laughs>